In today's video, I'm going to show my top easy Lightroom tricks to transform macro images from regular shots like this into more eye-catching images like this. Okay, let's dive straight into Lightroom. So this is the first shot that I'm going to look at. I took this a couple of weeks ago out in the woods near my house. Um, and I'm really pleased with how this looks. I took this at f2.8, so very wide aperture to give it that lovely shallow depth of field effect, that lovely airy feel. We've got the great bokeh in the background from all those uh, the, the sun coming through the trees um, and the leaves in the background. And then we've got these leaves down here, this foliage in the bottom half of the frame. So I think this image has got some lovely depth that's created by that wide aperture. And actually straight out of camera it's not too bad at all but there are definitely some uh, little tweaks that I want to do and I want to show what those are because I've had a few people asking about some of my Lightroom techniques, some um, more explanation needed perhaps on some of those things. So I thought it's a good opportunity to show exactly what I would do with a shot like this. Now I think a lot of people would maybe open an image in Lightroom and immediately start playing around with sliders like your exposures, your shadows and doing whatever it is um, to your shot. Um, and these are global edits. So that means that it anything that you, you change on these sliders, it affects the entire image. If we bring up our exposure, it's bringing up the exposure on the flowers, on the background, on the foliage. It's across the board. And sometimes that's good, but I actually find that a more refined way of working is to use selective edits to put that light exactly where you want. And of course, to not put that light somewhere and being able to have complete control over how your image looks. So let's just reset everything here and I will show you exactly what I mean. So we're starting out and I think that these flowers look pretty nice but they definitely need a little bit of a lift. And so I'm gonna start off with a radial gradient. So if we click on this and now I can just drag out this circle over the top. Now anywhere that is red, is where our changes will be applied. As you can see here, it fades very gradually out into nothing. So our effects will be applied here, but not over here. This is because I've got my feather set to 100, to the maximum feather amount possible. If I bring this down to zero, you can see we've got this very hard line between where the effect is and where the effect isn't. So if I start applying an increase in exposure to you know, 0.64 or something here, it looks very, very odd because we've just got this line of where the effect is being applied. But if I start to bring that feather up, you can just see how that line starts to disappear more and more. And now we've got that lovely increase in exposure, but you would have no idea really that we've used this radial filter. So now we can move that up and down. I actually think it was in a really good place, somewhere around here maybe, just enough to give it an extra little bit of kiss of light, but without affecting the whole image. And of course you can change the size of this so we could have it just very selectively on um, these flowers, which I think we could do, or I could bring it out a little bit more so it's affecting them completely. And again, you can see with that red, exactly when I, when I hover over here, exactly where that is falling. So it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the little masking box up here and I'm going to click create new mask. This time we're going to go with a linear gradient. Now linear as opposed to the radial gradient allows you to do uh, effects in more of a straight line. So as you can see it comes up like this and we can have again a very hard line between um, where it is or isn't being applied or we can bring it right up like this move it around and create a very very soft line which is exactly what I want to do so I'm going to bring it down something about this and place it here because what I want to do is just slightly darken down these leaves at the bottom they're a little bit bright and the viewer of your photo their eye will be more naturally drawn to the brighter parts of the image in this case I want that to be the flowers of course so I just want to do what I can to help the eye be guided towards that by just slightly bringing down that exposure down here at the bottom, just emphasizing the fact that this is a brighter part. And already I think this is looking really nice if I just turn that off and on. You can see the difference it makes. Before we've got quite a lot of brightness down there on that leaves at the bottom of the frame and now they're still there but it's just a little bit more subtle. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to be a bit more dramatic and it's going to give this a, a bit more of um, of a stylized look. It may not be to everyone's taste, but it is sometimes something that can be quite powerful. So I'm going to show you what it is. So we're going to get a radial gradient and I'm going to draw this big sort of cigar shape. 
like this, make it really, really long. And then we're gonna take it all the way off screen and then bring it right in. So what I'm gonna hopefully do is mimic a sunlight, a sunbeam coming in from those trees, uh, from that background, coming in and lighting up these flowers. Because if we just have a look, just um, get rid of this one a sec. Um, we can see that the sunlight is coming in from the top left of the frame. You can see the way that it's catching on sort of the back left parts of these um, of these flowers, but not so much on the right. So this is naturally where that light would fall. So I'm trying to replicate that with this, but very much enhance it. So we're going to increase that exposure by quite a bit. We're also going to really increase that temperature. So to really give that warming glow of light, also increase the tint, because I think that looks really nice. It gives it a lovely sort of late afternoon um, vibe. And again, we can move this around and you can see exactly where it's falling. So we want it to very much come in from that top corner and then cascade down over our flowers, just like this. And I think that's looking really nice. But it's a huge effect, it's a huge change. It's a lot of exposure and a lot of temperature and tint. So we turn that off and on, it's definitely something that we've added rather than something that is naturally there but it i think it looks really really nice so there we go that is how i would do that and i think that's a really powerful effect and again this is just working with our selective tools as of yet we haven't touched anything else and yet we've gone from this a fine but relatively uninspiring shot to something much more um, I think visually engaging but I do think having done that there's a little bit too much um, brightness on some of these petals so I'm just going to bring in a fourth mask this time just a brush fairly small brush tool I'm going to use quite a low flow now flow basically dictates the amount of the effect being applied each time you make a stroke. So if you've got a flow of uh, only 20, that means that 20% of your effect will be applied. So it allows you to really naturally build up the effect. So here I'm going to bring those highlights down. And I'm going to paint that in over these. Hopefully it'll be nice and subtle. We don't want to take those highlights down completely. It's crucially stopped any of these petals from actually blowing out in the highlights. We've still maintained some information there. So I think that's looking really good. Before and after, always check your before and after because all of these can be adjusted to taste is the great thing about working with these masks. We can go in and take a look at this uh, linear down here and go, mm, you know what, maybe you could go a little bit darker. And then we can go back to our mask in the middle and think, yeah, maybe bring that down just a little bit because of the extra brightness from, uh, from this one. We could play with the highlights here, maybe even drop those shadows a little bit to give a bit more definition. You can always go back and change them. So this is looking really good, um, but I'm just gonna do a couple more things. In the tone curve, I just want to bring in a bit of a filmic fade by bringing up that black point. Something around here, just turn it off and on. I really like what that's doing, giving it a little bit of a filmy vibe. Uh, and then I want to adjust our hues because um, we haven't adjusted our white balance um, and some of the uh, extra color that we brought in here, I think has shifted things in a way that I'm not too happy with. First of all, these greens are a little bit yellowy and I don't really like that. So I'm gonna bring that hue up quite a bit so it's a really nice deep emerald green. And clearly it's increased that saturation in, this, in the process. It all looks a little bit toxic. So I'm gonna go into our saturation and bring that green channel down so that it blends much more naturally with our image. So just that one shift already made a huge difference. I love the look of this, but playing with that hue has also changed some of the yellows. And I liked that warmth that we had from the yellow. So I'm gonna grab that yellow hue, drag that down, much more into the oranges and we've brought back that lovely sort of orangey tone coming through the leaf here and again in that background so again we turn that off and on the difference it's made to our image here is huge and we can play with the luminance as well maybe increase it for a little bit for those yellows maybe a little bit for the greens as well and then we also need to do some adjustments on these bluebells because they've gone very sort of purpley lilac-y and they were actually much more blue so we do need to do some adjustments there so we'll start off by grabbing the purple and bringing that a little bit further down towards blue, somewhere around here. You know what? I think that's all we need to do. Just slightly adjust that purple. Yeah, I think that looks great. Looks really nice. But I'm also just gonna increase the uh, luminance of that purple and also just increase the saturation. 
just so that they that color pops off the screen a little bit more against the other ones. I still want it to be quite a subtle look overall, but I really, really like it. So again, let's just turn off that color channel. Look at the difference that has made to this image. This one tool in just a few minutes absolutely transformed it. The last thing that I want to do on this image is add a little bit of color grading. Now, this allows you to put different colors in the shadows, in the midtones, in the highlights. In this case, I'm going to start with the shadows and I want to add a little bit of a, a cool blue to our shadows. Um, I want to be fairly subtle. If we go too far, it gets very, very blue very, very quickly. Somewhere around just 15. It's a subtle shift, but it just again gives it that slight filmic cinematic quality which I'm really really into here and then in our highlights I want to add a little bit of warmth back because we've kind of lost that with some of the the green tones that we brought in so I'm going to set it to a nice yellowy orange and then we just steadily increase the saturation if I pulse this up and down you can see what that's doing it's just adding that warmth into the highlights coming in as though as though these petals and these leaves are just being sun-kissed a little bit. It's beautiful effect. Going a little harder than I did with the shadows, around 23. And if we turn it off and on, I love what that's doing to this image. But I have noticed it's, it's sort of undone some of the colors in our um, flowers. So I'm going to go back into our hue and just shift that purple down back into those blues. And then finally, just a little bit of a crop, straighten it up, and then I'm just gonna bring this in, something like this, so that they're nice and uh, centered. I really like how this looks, and this has not taken long at all. Look at the difference. Straight out of camera, it's fine, but it's a, you know, this is definitely just a snap on location. And then with just those few tools, we have transformed it into a much more, I think, much more eye-catching um, uh, sort of photographic work of art. But look, None of these tools have been touched. We've not gone and messed around with our exposure, our highlights. Everything has been very, very selective. Putting that light exactly where we want it, adjusting those colors exactly how we want. So we've really crafted this image. So I really love how that looks. So let's just go and choose one more image. Um, we're gonna take a look at this one. Um, another one that straight out of camera, I'm really pleased with how it looks, but again, could definitely do with some tweaks. And I'm gonna use basically some of the same techniques that I used before. We're gonna bring in another radial gradient, big old cigar sausage shape coming right in off the um, upper left corner because again we've already got that light coming in here you can see that it's highlighting um, the seed pods and the rain um, coming in from the upper left so we're going to bring that up like that extend it down here put it somewhere like this feather at 100 up that exposure we can go quite far with this we're well over a stop of exposure and then increase that tint uh, the temperature and increase the tint and we've got this lovely light all we've done look at that before and after before that's already just that one tool has transformed this image how quick is that love it absolutely love it i don't think there's many more things i want to do i don't think there's any more selective tools i want to do so i'm going to go straight into our hues again bring a little bit more sort of vibrant greens out maybe darken uh sorry make those yellows a little bit warmer if we start touching the oranges things are going to get very pink and very weird so everything else i'm going to leave pretty much where it is maybe we can add a little bit of color grading in those shadows again a little bit of blue just creeping in and again in our highlights tiny little bit turn that off and on that is a very subtle shift but i do think it makes a difference and i think that's it how long was that a couple of minutes and we've Taking that image from being okay, but a little bit gloomy and a little bit forgettable, and suddenly it's got much more life to it. We've got this lovely kiss of sunlight coming in. It's catching on those um, on, on all the water droplets coming in. It's catching on the seed pods. I think this image stands out so much more as a result, and it's been so so quick but does bring me to an end of today's video um hopefully this has been really helpful to see the sorts of tools that i use all the time on my images um and this isn't just for macro these are the same tools i use for uh, my landscapes and for uh you know and portraits city stuff street stuff whatever it is i'm doing 
I'm really working with these uh, selective tools um, more and more because that is what gives you fine control over how your image looks. And having that control is really important to getting a really polished looking image. But if you have found this video helpful, do please hit that like button. Do of course consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.